coup is what most people are describing it as. Uh, give us an indication of what the synergies are between yourselves and Mobicom. Thank you. Thank you for that question. I think if you look at the two providers, first and foremost, Telcom Kenya um, has a national footprint in terms of the services that we offer. We have an extensive fixed line network that spreads across the country and also a CDMA network which covers I would say the upper part of, of Kenya mm -hmm. and for the last two years we've also been extensively rolling out uh, GSM service particularly in the key urban areas and most importantly there's been a lot of talk about broadband so Telcom Kenya obviously has invested heavily in the broadband uh, mm -hmm. area and we have key shareholding in teams as well as we are the local partner for the easy submarine uh, cable so if you look mm -hmm. at all that capacity it makes Telcom Kenya, of course, an ideal partner in terms of provision of an integrated uh, communication uh, services within this country. On the other hand, um, you need to look at uh, accessibility of the product and availability, and this is where Mobicom comes with its strengths. Um, so we have very good quality of service. We are able to offer a wide array of services, and Mobicom, on the other hand, has over 10 years' experience in distribution, has a very... Um, conversant approach to the way it has been dealing with distribution in this market, particularly of GSM. And now we're looking at helping them expand into the unknown territories for themselves, moving into data and obviously to the other array of telephone mm -hmm. services. And we believe that with their capacity and their knowledge of distribution, we can both grow our businesses. Well, Angela, give us uh, you know some insights into your subscriber numbers because the reports that we've been reading is that in fact your subs subscriber numbers have dropped. Where is it as it stands right now? Now, um, basically, if you look at our subscriber numbers, there's there's two ways to look at it. Um, mm -hmm. There's you can look at subscriber su subscriber numbers in totality and also talk about active subscribers. I think the numbers that you're referring to that look like they have dropped is when we look at active subscribers. These are basically customers who recharge their phones within the last 30 days. As we speak in the market, if you're looking at GSM on its own, we have close to 3 million SIMs out there because we've had a numbering plan from 0770 mm. uh, up to 0773 and we're actually almost about to exhaust that. But we know that we're operating in a triple SIM environment where subscribers have more than one SIM card. What is your active so subscriber base at this point in time? Okay, well, the active subscribers we have in totality is 2 million. 2 million, so across 3 million all down. Just also looking at the competitive environment, because we know, we know that Mobicom had synergies with Safaricom, it terminated its deal. We also know that uh, you know, Zane is very much instrumental in the competitive environment. Uh, clearly, it should be also a question that I should be asking Mobicom, but your view in terms of what made uh, Telcom Kenya so attractive for Mobicom? Well, I think, as I said, it's the integrated services that we offer. They have been mm -hmm. growing their business um, based on GSM, and I believe for them where they're looking at is being able to offer their customers a wide array of services, and this is where we come in as a strength uh, as Telcom Kenya. Could you put it in terms of in monetary terms, uh, in terms of what kind of revenues Mobicom could help Telcom Kenya generate going forward? Well, I think that's a bit confidential, but mm -hmm. what we can say is that if they have been able to generate close to 5 billion shillings um, from their relationship with, uh, with, with the other uh, provider that they've had in the past, mm -hmm. we can only be optimistic that we'll be able to generate as similar, if not higher, revenues with our wide array of products and services. Do you think this is going to impact your market share as well? Most definitely. It's a deal that we, we, we're sure, not that we're optimistic, but we are sure that it is going to improve our, our numbers as we move, for, as we move forward, mm -hmm. what particularly is your now with number portability. What is your market share at this point in time? What is your market share at this point in time in Kenya? Well, it depends on where you're looking at it. If you look at it from GSM subscribers, then obviously we are ranked third uh, at the moment. But if you're looking at total, because obviously mm -hmm. in the fixed line market, we're playing there alone. So we have, I would say, 100% of the market uh, of the, we're, we're playing in, the, in, that, in that field of, of fixed. Um, but in total, I believe we are about 30% of the market share. Um, Angela, looking at the fact that uh, Mobicom has around 42 outlets, uh, as you mentioned, around 85% uh, of the population which it covers, uh, also just uh, give us some insights into what product uh, innovations you will be embarking on, given the fact that you will be touching on uh, many uh, consumers that you haven't been able to access before. 
Well, as I said, um, if you look at Telcom, we're able to offer various uh, services. And one of the things that we're now able to offer Mobicom subscribers or customers who have been able to access services through Mobicom outlets is a wide array of services, either on data or voice. So what we're giving to them is options uh, and attractive options. So regardless of where you are, we've got a service that suits uh, the particular people who inhibit an area. So if you're looking at Northern Kenya, then we've got a CDMA, which enables them to sell additional services to the people within that area. And with our CDMA platform, of course, then we're able to sell data. So we are seeing a wider penetration of data services across the country, and hopefully in future, we'll also be able to grow our GSM subscribers as well. Mm. Uh, Angela, in terms of preferred dealers and non-preferred dealers, could you give us your views on that and how that's playing out in Kenya? And also the fact that, as we mentioned, it is synergies between the two companies. What kind of revenue uh, would Mobicom be getting uh, from distributing your products? Well, in terms of revenues, I wouldn't want to speak about that because I believe that is information that Mobicom would best uh, be the ones sharing it. Um, but as I said, obviously, they would not be moving from one venture where they were turning over significant amounts of money and uh, moving to a venture where they would, they would uh, get, obviously, lower revenues than before. So mm -hmm. their intention of moving to Orange is because of the business opportunity that they have seen, and therefore the revenues can only grow. And we believe that we have the right products and services to enable that. In terms of preferred, preferred partners, um, I would say Orange did have initially a wide range of uh, distributors. We had close to 400 in number. But what we have done is we, we narrowed that down to a number of partners um, that we felt we could manage. And secondly, those who are interested in investing more um, into the business. Because it's important for distribution to have availability and accessibility. You also need to have businessmen and women who are willing to put in money to increase distribution. Mm. And so we're not necessarily talking about cash-rich distributors, but having people who are committed towards this business, meaning that they're not doing this as a one-off, but as a business that they can see uh, being able to grow or being able to grow with that business uh, for, for years to come. So right now we have uh, preferred, what we call preferred partners, and in total there are now 56 of those preferred partners. Of course now Mobicom joins not as a preferred partner per se, but as a national preferred partner. The reason, because they have obviously quite a number of outlets. And what we've done for these particular partners is uh, because of their reach, we've obviously been able to give them a better commission structure, um, so they're able to, to earn more, because again, the kind of um, sales or the kind of purchases they've been making in volume are significantly huge. And then they can then give the smaller distributors, the smaller dealerships, they're able to distribute that within the levels at which these dealers are willing to, to invest in the business. So we think that this model that we have adopted is one, ensures that there's availability and accessibility, easy accessibility of our products. But secondly, that also the preferred mm. partners, those who are investing in the business, are also able to reap the benefits from it.